it's Eric Qualman, number one best-selling author. You might know me as Equal Man. I've been blessed to write six number one bestsellers and perform in 47 countries, reaching 25 million people this decade. But I'm super excited to join forces with the NCAA. We're gonna go over practical tips, like how do you post it forward? You've heard about paying it forward. Posting it forward is doing the exact same thing online. It's not about you, it's about shining the light on others, whether it's a friend, whether it's a teammate, whether it's a company you're trying to get a job with. We're gonna to stress to you how to post it forward in the coming months. Our digital leadership education materials cover a lot of ground, but one thing we wanna make sure that we stress is how to produce your best digital stamp. Now, what exactly is your digital stamp? It's comprised of two different things. It's comprised of your digital footprint, and that's something you've heard about a lot on CNN or read in the New York Times. Your digital footprint is anything that you upload about yourself, or maybe it's a post on YouTube, it's a tweet, it's a text, it's a share on Instagram. So we have control over that digital footprint. But the more important part of your digital stamp is what's called the digital shadow. Your digital shadow is what others post about you online. And so those two factors together, the digital footprint plus your digital shadow, produce your digital stamp. And our materials are designed to make sure you produce your best stamp because essentially it gets down to your own personal branding or the branding of your company and it helps drive all of your current success as well as your future success. You see when it comes to your digital stamp we all have our own personal story and I want you to embrace that however unique that might be you've got to go deep on that story. When you think about me if you look at these crazy green glasses there's actually a funny story behind these and it's actually helped me become very good at business and for my business it increased our revenue dramatically and we'll get into that story in the months ahead but I know each one of you has your own individual story and all we want to do is give you the digital tools to make that story as bright as it can be. You're going to see me in newsletters via Skype and then also in person and also via these videos just converting us into being digital leaders. Understanding how do we produce our best and then protect it. So we're gonna use digital, we're gonna use social, we're gonna use mobile to achieve all these things and to get to our one word. What's our one word in life? What do we wanna accomplish? So my one word in life is empowerment. I wanna empower as many people as possible. I wanna empower student athletes, I wanna empower businesses. But for the purpose of this video and the videos coming in the coming months, it's all around as a student athlete, how do I produce my best and then protect it? And so as we look at our why or what's our mission, how do we differ from others? And if we went away tomorrow, what's the loss to society? My why is about empowering people. So it's about entertaining, educating, and empowering people to achieve their best life, leadership, and legacy. So it's an honor to be here with the NCAA and with you in the coming months. I look forward to connecting with you individually. I mentioned your one word, and what I'd like you to do to get to that one word is you can do this right now. Take out a piece of paper and sketch out a bullseye. So you have a, a circle in the middle. I want you to write down what that one word is, what you want to be your digital stamp five seconds from now, five years, 50 years from today. Or to put it differently, if you were to Google your name, what's the one word you want to show up? And in the coming weeks, I want us to expand that into one to two sentences. Or think about it like a coffee cup. I want to have you focus on this one word every day for the rest of your life. And so for my word, it's empower. And when I go to expand that to one to two sentences, it's actually entertain, educate, and empower people to achieve their best life, leadership, and legacy. And again, this is a great exercise, so I want to have you have that bullseye, that bullseye sheet of paper with the one word on it, in front of you every day. So put that in some place of prominence, and also please share that with as many friends, relatives, and other people in your lives so that they support you and provide that pressure to make sure you're being consistent with your digital stamp. One of the main things we need to understand and embrace are the five habits that digital leaders practice. So I spent four years researching what separated the good from the great in this digital world. And it turns out they all practice five habits. Now when we look at these five habits, it's important to understand that for most of you, I just want you to practice two habits, especially at the beginning. Go deep on your strengths. Don't try to show up your weaknesses. Go deep on the two that are strongest with you already. That's gonna help you separate you from the competition. So what are these five habits? The beautiful thing is these five habits form the acronym of STAMP. And again, we're all trying to produce our best digital stamp, so this is gonna be easy for you to remember. 
S stands for simplification. It's not about adding stuff to our crazy busy lives, it's actually about taking away and learning to focus. When we look at T, T is for true. That gets back to our one word or our two senses on the stamp we're actually trying to create. And we try to do that every day, being consistent as possible with who we are or who we are trying to become. Then we look at A is for action. Action and attitude trump everything in this digital world. Nothing happens without action, but most of us are caught up doing throughput instead of producing output. And we'll get into that concept of the throughput versus output. And then when we look at the M, M's for map. You need a firm destination in mind, but we also need to be understanding there's gonna be hurdles put in place, and those hurdles are a beautiful thing in getting away of our destination, because guess what? They're not gonna keep you out, they're gonna keep the competition out. So M's for map. And then we look last but not least, one of the most important things is people. P is for people. We need to surround ourselves with the right people, both offline and also online, because we're a reflection of who we surround ourselves with. We've looked at study after study, one of them being that your salary is the average of your five closest friends. So as you graduate, think about that. Your salary is the average of your five closest friends. So you want to surround yourself with great people and also cheer them on because once they get a raise, you go, oh, I know I'm going to get a raise coming up here in the future. So those are the five habits of being a digital leader and that's what we want to make sure that we do. And again, focus on the two that you're strongest on to start with. Now keep in mind we're not trying to produce perfect people. None of us are perfect. So we want you to embrace a concept called being flossom. It's not through our perfections that people love us, it's actually through our flaws. When we make a mistake, do we take the time and effort to number one, own that mistake, number two, indicate what we're going to do to fix it, and then third, do we follow through and actually fix it. And the research shows that people love Flossom people and they love Flossom companies. If you look at FedEx, when they have an issue with a client and they take the time to resolve that issue, that customer is three times more likely to repeat as a customer than someone that never had an issue in the first place. Think about that, that's incredible. That someone that had an issue is more likely to repeat as a customer than someone that never had an issue in the first place. And again, that's all about being Flossom or to put it differently, if you get digital lemons, it's all about how to make digital lemonade. As we go down the journey of becoming digital leaders together, we always need to remind ourselves or ask ourselves the question that I often get asked, are digital leaders made or are they born? Well, obviously they're made, otherwise that book would have been about one page, but that's a beautiful thing that success is a choice and that digital leaders are made, whether you're 18 or whether you're 80, it doesn't matter. And a good example of this is Howard Schultz. So Howard Schultz, if you're not familiar with him, he is the founder and CEO of Starbucks. Now he got the idea originally for Starbucks when he traveled abroad and saw all these baristas and saw these beautiful coffee shops in Europe. He said, why don't we have that in the United States? And it was less about coffee and more about the experience. And so Starbucks was very successful. And then Howard Schultz eventually went on to become chairman. But during the Great Recession, like a lot of companies, Starbucks went down quickly and so their stock dropped all the way to seven dollars. Now the reason I'm telling you this is because then Howard came back to become the CEO and he quickly realized that the world had shifted digitally, that we were in a post-privacy world. He started off with sending the email and all of a sudden someone on his team sent it out to the world and Howard was very distraught but his head of public relations and communications came to him and said hey Howard you know, this is the way the world shifted. You're gonna to have to change into being a digital leader if you wanna lead this company again. And what he did was he reverted back to his playing days of baseball. He actually went to Northern Michigan University, which ironically enough, at the same time, Coach Tom Izzo was there, as well as Steve Mariucci at Northern Michigan. And he reverted back to that attitude and also that effort that he put forth in baseball and said, well, I can change. So he did convert himself from being a traditional leader into becoming a digital leader. And by doing so, he has transformed Starbucks on our journey of coffee. He has transformed Starbucks from being a coffee company into now being a digital company. Starbucks takes more mobile transactions than any company in the world. So now Starbucks is a digital company that just happens to sell coffee products. One of the top questions I always get is what should I post online or more importantly, what should I not post online? 
There's a lot of things and details I could go into on this, but to get you 90% there, it'll all go back to two things that I'm about to tell you. So if you do these two things, you'll be 90% where you need to be when it comes to the question of what should I post or what should I not post when it comes to digital. The first rule of thumb is think about your boss or your mom or your dad looking over your shoulder and reading what you've posted or looking at that photo or the video. Would you be embarrassed if they were looking at that? If that's the case, that's the mom rule. Don't post it. The second rule I want to give you here is the three second rule. Now what is the three second rule? The three second rule applies to, if you have to think more than three seconds, whether this is a value or appropriate to post online, then don't do it. It's not. When we talk about the value, ensure that it's something like, everyone needs to know this about my brand or my personal brand. Everyone needs to know this information. It's definitely a value to the end user. So again, it shouldn't take more than three seconds. It has to be that powerful that you definitely need to post that out there. So that's the three second rule. So if you adhere to those two rules on what to post and what not to post, don't post it if you'd be embarrassed if your mom, your dad, your boss saw it. And secondarily, the three second rule, you will be golden. And I'm loving that I'm able to connect with you both professionally and also personally because this story is personal to me. Because you see, I was a student athlete as well. But my story like yours is a long story. Because when I looked at it, when I was in the eighth grade, I started, I love basketball so much that I wrote a magazine called Swish Magazine. Uh, my first advertiser was my dad who worked in advertising at Buick and so I was actually an entrepreneur back in the eighth grade and I loved basketball. But you see, my love and my skill didn't marry up. So I was cut as a junior from the junior varsity basketball team, from the, from the varsity team. I couldn't make varsity, so as a junior, I was cut from the team. But I stuck with it. When I went to Michigan State University, I served as the, the, the manager or the water boy, and then went from water boy to walk on, and then eventually got a scholarship. A kid that was cut as a junior in high school eventually made it because I stuck with it. And that's why we write down that one word. And that's what we're gonna do in the coming months ahead is make sure we stay with it, that we grind it out. And I think that one of the reasons that I made the team was just staying with it and, and grinding it out, as Coach Izzo would say, those are his words, he loves grinders. And so when I was the manager, Occasionally there would be a sick player or an injured player, so that was my time to jump in to practice. And this only happened once or twice a year, so I had a very limited opportunity. But one day they said, hey, we need you, Kwame, get in here, play on the scout team. I got in there, within five minutes I got elbowed in the face and actually got some teeth knocked out, which at the time I thought that it was just one of the fake teeth that I had in my mouth. I had a fake tooth, so I thought it was the fake tooth that got knocked out. So I told the trainer, I'm okay, let me keep playing. Well, it turns out I knocked out four teeth, but I knew I only had one chance, and so I stuck it with it and hung in there, and that's why I made the team, because Coach Izzo loves that toughness. And the next day he said, Qualman, I don't know if you're the dumbest guy or the toughest guy, but I think you're the dumbest guy for keeping playing with those teeth. But I could tell with that smile that eventually that helped me get on the team. You see, you need to understand, there's a beautiful world in which we live in that success is a choice because mainly due to all these digital tools. There's no more gatekeepers. If we want to go in and achieve something, we can do it. If we're the next Justin Bieber or the next Lady Gaga when it comes to music, we don't have to wait for a music label to sign us up. We can post our music on YouTube and go from there. And I can give you an example after example after example of how people are doing this on their own. That's why entrepreneurship is blowing through the roof. Or entrepreneurs, those that work at major companies, are actually having that entrepreneurial spirit inside those companies. But it all starts with your digital stamp or your digital reputation. That's how important these items are. Because whatever vocation we decide to go into, it's all about trust. Do we trust that person? And part of that trust factor today is actually digital reputation because it is fast becoming your de facto reputation. Think about the last time you are about to meet someone. What'd you do? You Googled your, their name. You looked at them on LinkedIn. You looked at their Instagram account. So that's why we're gonna go over these with our educational materials coming forward, because that's what we're gonna cover off, how to produce your best and protect them. In the book, What Happens on Campus Stays on YouTube was needed because every morning I'd wake up and some student athlete was either doing something positive to enhance their digital stamp or something negative, which was a ripple, not only for their time in college and university, but also after they graduated as a negative ripple upon their future success. And if we look at two stories, one negative and one positive, it showcases exactly 
what I'm talking about and exactly the need for us to produce our best and then to protect it. So there was a University of Mississippi college football player that was projected to be drafted in the top 10 in the NFL draft. But the day of the draft, someone that had access to his Twitter account posted a video of him smoking a huge gas mask of marijuana. So that caused all the NFL teams pause, and so he slid several positions in the draft. And it's estimated it cost him seven to 12 million dollars. And again, that's not something that he posted. It was actually something that someone else posted. It was part of his digital shadow. Now on the positive side, a lot of you might be familiar with the story of Anthony Robles. But if you aren't, let me go into it. It's one of the greatest stories. You see, Anthony trained super hard. He was told that he would never be good at wrestling. They told him you should go into something else, like music, or maybe you'd be better off going over here, maybe in archery, where you could sit down and shoot a bow and arrow. But he said, you know what, this is who I am. This is what I want to be. This is what I want to become. And I'm going to stick with it. I'm going to grind it out. And eventually, he became a champion at wrestling from Arizona State University. I look forward to partnering with you in the coming months. I look forward to all of you individually reaching out to me. I'm very easy to find. It's just Equal Man across the board. Equal Man at EqualMan.com. Equal Man on Twitter. You get the point. But you can find me easily digitally. Just Google my name. And then also, my mobile phone number is 404-808-4561. Please text, tweet, and treat me nicely.